It's 9.30, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Krzysztof Żuraf. Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. Dzień dobry. And uh, Krzysztof came from, from Poland. He's from Wroclaw. Uh, he works as a Python and JavaScript developer. And besides coding, he's a passionate Toastmaster. And he's keen on running, meeting new people, and doing some street workouts. Uh, so maybe we can work out after, after the session uh, together uh, to, to, to freshen up a little bit in the morning. So once again, welcome, and, uh, and the floor is yours. Thank you. And yes, I said, as yeah, I'm like, I'm Krzysztof Żuraf and I'm from Poland. Normally, most of people have a problem with pronouncing the Polish names, but it's good that we are in Slovakia, so it's, uh, we get covered. And let's start with explaining a little bit who I am. And as, as was introduced before, I'm a Python JavaScript developer at SDX Next, based in Wrocław in Poland. And basically, I want to talk to you today about the solution reviews. And let me start with a little bit of the history. And which one of you have, a, have been either the situation that has that new project came and you have to be in up to speed because you are assigned to a new project the new, with the new, newest technologies like GraphQL or the Relay, all that stuff, and you have to be up to speed. And it happens to me also. And, I and what I was fi finding, when I, especially when I, when I was doing the, in the face of the code reviews, when I was doing the code review, that most of the times my solution that I, I already implemented, I put the work on that, I work fearlessly to find a solution to a given problem or task, was basically declined. And they said me, okay, this is not exactly the solution that we want. Maybe you can work something a little bit better. So I decided, okay, maybe there is a better way to handling such situation. Maybe it's a, maybe what, what will happen if I decided to first have my solution that I want to implement the, to the problem reviewed before even I start coding. So that's why I searched through the internet. And of course, there is already, this problem was already solved and it's called solution reviews. So today I want to talk to you a little bit more about those solution reviews because I decided to try a little bit experimenting in my team. I told them, okay, I will do this solution review. I tried different techniques and we will see how it works out. And based on that, maybe we can, maybe it will, benef will be beneficial for all team members. So let's start with the, what are those solution reviews? And for me, they are a way of evaluating your implementation. So before you even start, you start doing some coding, you, it may seem obvious, but still, you sit down and you write your thoughts in this or other form, that way I will talk a little bit later. And based on that, you basically, you give this implementation to your peers to review it, the peer or peers. And based on that, you implement the changes and then you go with the full implementation. But also what are the solutions reviews are not? Because sometimes I felt in this trap that the solution reviews are seen as a, like additional work to the code reviews and you don't necessarily need to provide a working code for the, for the solution review. It can be either in the pseudocode or in the written form. It doesn't matter at all because it's up to you how you're gonna implement the solution reviews. Okay, so right now we know what are the solution reviews and what are not. And let's, let's move back, let's go to the examples because I decided to try uh, different things for a couple of, at least one thing for a couple of months to see how it works with each other. And yeah, this is, this is what, what are my find findings. So the first one is about the estimations. And I have a question for you. Do, which one of you is working in some kind of a agile um, technology or work like a framework? Okay. So 
Mostly, you may know that when there is, uh, there is a, this meeting, when you have uh, estimations, it means that you, your, your team is estimating how much work that, that can be done. And normally, it's happening that, OK, you started doing this way that someone, for example, when you are estimating the numbers, someone gave three, someone gave five. And normally, it's, it's, the question arises, why did you give three? Why did, did you give five? And normally, it's like, oh, OK, I was between in two minds, three and five. I can go to five. And uh, then, we, then you move next to the next story or the ticket that you're estimating. But what I found out that when, I decide, when instead of uh, basically uh, doing this, just going to the another, another ticket, we start asking the question, why did you give three? Why did you give five? And not just stopping and then, ah, because I was in two minds, but digging deep. And what I found out that was asking these simple questions in the like estimating phase, and this was already part of our process. It gives us ability to talk a little bit more about the desired problems and the so problems and the complexity of the system that we are facing. But these estimations have uh, some kind of a draw drawbacks because when you are estimating, actually no one is assigned to the given story or the task. So you are estimating the group and you are not, not already have a direct solution in your mind. So it can be a little bit tricky to have a proper like, solution review in this phase. But anyway, I think it's a, it's a good idea. The another thing was about the, about the asking. I mean, asking either in the person or in the Slack. And normally, I did it like this way that I come to my peer and say, OK, I have this task. Can you help me? And see, he said, OK, yeah, 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 let's do it. But what I found out that when I was doing this um, it's asking phase, when I was asking my peers, when I have uh, too many questions, it started to distracting them. And what I decided to do instead was bulk them a little bit. So what, I, what does it mean? It means that when I have a question that I want to ask my peer, I immediately started thinking about the another question that follows this first question. And then I can ask those, those questions in the one bulk. And, not, and this allows me to not disturb my peer for the longer period of time, because I can start asking them questions every five minutes and we'll be, they will be distracted for sure. Another idea that I tried was doing the pull requests. But normally the pull requests are for the code review phase. But I decided to introduce this work in progress pull request when I pushed only the smallest possible change in my code. And then I wrote down in the description of the pull request what, what, was, what, what was my desired solution. And actually, it worked really fine because it's, it's, uh, I, was able, I, I have to structure my thoughts to be written down. Because normally, when you are thinking, you are saying, OK, this can be like this, this, this. You can do in this in that way. But when, the, when there is phase to write down your thoughts, there is totally, it's, it's totally different. The same as uh, with the, uh, having a blog. You have to write in a more consistent way so everyone can understand you. And what was really nice also about doing the solution reviews in the pull request, that the, at least the GitHub provides some uh, ten, tens up, tens down, so I can easily see which people are already reviewing my pull request, or they declining, and maybe they have some comments to the implementation that I want to do. And yeah, the last, the last example that I tried was strictly connected with the documentation. It's, it's also about the writing. So I thought about writing in this on other form. So it means either Confluence or the, in the Markdown files. And I also sent them to my peers. And I tried all these techniques. And I, then, I came up to this conclusion that 
the solution reviews give me this ability basically to be more confident the, uh, of the code that I'm producing. Especially when I'm new to the team, I don't know the whole, full complexity of the system. And it was easy for me to overlook some really important part of the system. But when I have this solution review, when my solution is being reviewed, and the person said, OK, Chris, this is something that you can work also in this area, it helps me. For sure, there won't be, the bugs aren't, the, the bugs will be still found in my, in my implementation. But I believe that like the, the, the cheapest way to fi fix your problem is in your head, not in the production. So I decided to, to implement it, but the problem was also with the, some drawbacks of this method, because you have to basically take your time, not jump straight to implementation, but think it through what we, what, what we want to achieve. And also, when I present uh, my findings to the team, they said, OK, let's do it in that there will be a part of our process. But what I found out that actually not each story are equal. So if you try to um, implement this solution reviews to everything, it won't work. Because people are a little bit skeptical when, when my manager told them, yeah, you have to do solution review for every story that is coming. Uh, in the development. So what we try to do instead is basically pick the stories that I want to, we want to implement the solution reviews for. So when the story is worth it, when it's really complex, we use the solution review to help us to have a better solutions, a better implementations. But when the story is really easy, like one, one, one liner, we don't do the solution reviews. So yes, this, this is the overall idea about the solution reviews. And yes, that's, that's all. Thank you. And this is my uh, blog if you want to read, and also my Twitter handle. Thank you. Thank you, Krzysztof. And uh, we have a question uh, at Slido, and uh, the question is, can you share an example from an actual project when a solution review was especially ver valuable? Okay, yes. So actually, I tried it in the project that was, actually, I cannot say the name of the, the client because I have an NDA, but anyway, the project was really advanced in terms of the, like, the technology was bleeding edge. So what does it mean? I mean, like GraphQL, newest Django, newest Python, Relay, Re uh, React, Redux, everything new that you can imagine. And the, the problem was that when we started implementing this feature, there are some, some libraries, some uh, building blocks of our application also were also in a beta phase. So it was a little bit um, overhead of doing that. And when I came to the project, it was already a few months in the development, but what I found out is a really nice idea to getting a little bit more knowledge about the different parts of the systems. Thank you. Thank you. So let's give a hand uh, to Krzysztof again.